What's up, you guys? I'm B. Simone. And I'm Megan Ashley. And welcome to the Know For Sure podcast, where we talk about healing, growing, evolving, and having the tough conversations. Yes, and we also talk about relationships, not just romantic relationships, but platonic relationships. Like the relationship I have with my best friend, Megan Ashley, of 20 years. 20 years, baby. Yes, baby. Do you know for sure? I think I know for sure, but what I do know for sure is after this episode, you're going to know something for sure. It to be known. Are y'all recording? That. Yep. yep. All right. Hey, y'all. Oh. This hat is terrible. Good morning. <laughs> How much prep time <laughs> did you take? None. To get ready this morning. None. Oh, to get ready? Yeah. I love 10. So it was like roll out. Roll out. Brush teeth real quick. Roll, roll out. Roll out the bed. And- roll out. I don't like my ponytail in the hole. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to the Not For Sure Podcast. Megan hates my hat, as do I, but it's either that or you know what's under here. Just show the back, model it for us. So right here we have a nice blonde ombre. You see the root? That's, that's called ombre. It's not ombre. <laughs> <laughs> there is a thing over the E. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all we have. Um, so we are taking donations, hat donations. And so any type Someone of hat. Someone make this P.O. box. What's your P.O. box? You're going to have a hundred hats. I'm like, yeah, bitch, now give me the hat. Since you want to be so bad about the hat. Yeah. If, what's the tag say? Where is it from? Just take it off real quick. Ooh, what? you. Child of God. <laughs> it's okay. We're thankful. Uh, you know I will. I know you will. And then you have. Jesus. Oh. Jackie? <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> it's so soft, though. It's, it's growing out. Y'all know I had a fade. Uh, what, Where's this at from? Yeah, we're going to get tag. 87% so this is, nylon. So it's a workout hat. <laughs> okay. So it's a cooling <laughs> for your head. It's not going to be a lot in there. There's yeah, no, but um, if Jackie want to give me the beanie, you want to switch, Jackie? No, ma'am. Okay. Because that's right. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> that is absolutely absurd. Yeah, Y'all, back, so. welcome to the Know For Sure podcast. My hat is hideous, and you're probably going to see it for the next couple episodes because we're bulk shooting today, and it's all what? I got. Bulk. <laughs> <laughs> and you have on black socks. And I have on. Knickerbocker socks. <laughs> I be so tacky, y'all. I want to be comfortable. <laughs> Can you be comfortable without me and Tacky? <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, thank you for returning back to this insane chaos um, podcast. You got the we nerve to put on a diamond chain. <laughs> Baby girl. <laughs> you got the audacity, the audacity of you to have a Cuban <laughs> and a cross with diamonds. And you have on black socks. <laughs> and you can't put on a presentable hat? And you want to ice out your wrist? That is crazy. <laughs> Ooh, Some reflection is needed. It helped. It helps. It, help. it does. Sometimes you just have to see you. Was it helpful to see yourself? Is that what saw? Yeah, it? I'm glad he turned that thing around. Mm. Well, amen. Braylon's well, here and she's here and- in her full authentic self yes i am and that's all that matters and we're back and we're back you want to hit the who <clears throat> we're back Brian, that's, i'm sorry you, you can give a little bit more effort we're than that girl <laughs> don't start <laughs> come on do your key we're do your note uh, <clears throat> that's too high yeah, for sure we're 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 back, please. <laughs> no, because you know that wasn't the right note. I know, but I was hoping you could find it. I can't. What is my I note? I can find the note that okay, we always had. Note. No, I don't want to do your note. Do your <clears throat> note and I'll do mine. That wasn't it. Go ahead, do it again. <laughs> that wasn't it. Go ahead. It's the hat. <laughs> it is the hat. It's the crochet in the back. Off. We're we're back. back. Ooh, that was, that was pretty. It was better. I wouldn't say pretty. It was better <laughs> than where we are. We're back. We're back. And we have a guest. And she is embarrassing me. We have a guest. And she's embarrassing herself. <laughs> um, we are. This is like. This is crazy. Yeah. Because we have mentioned this guest 
often or a few times yeah. in our podcast saying that we wanted to her. have her yeah. on. on. And I have been, um, I feel like a student of our guests for the last few months. Yeah. And I'm just so excited. Yeah. And so, yeah, everyone. Welcome. Jackie. Is he, do you like to go yeah. by your full name full or name. just Jackie? People just automatically mm-hmm. say the full name. Okay. But Jackie is fine. Okay. Yeah. Jackie. Yo, Perry. That works. See? It, it don't feel right to, <laughs> to, to, to not say the whole thing. It, it don't, feel, do it don't thing. feel full. Is that is that your maiden name and mm-hmm. Larry name? Yeah, I was Jackie Hill. And then I became Jackie Hill Perry. Love you it. You added a Perry. I did. Because Jackie Perry don't feel right. Mm. How long like have it. you been married? 10 years in March. That's beautiful. Oh. I cannot wait to add something to my end. <laughs> it's like Raylan Greenfield Johnson. Do you want to keep your last name? No. You're getting rid of that. <laughs> Generational curse. God, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got to get that up off me. Ooh, Greenfield got to go. I'm just kidding, daddy. <laughs> when you say something. My dad asked me to keep my last name when I got married. Really? I'm, yeah, I'm divorced now. But when I got married, my dad was like, are you sure you don't want to keep your last name? Mm-hmm. I felt like that. I was like, no, dad. I want to take I my was husband's like, I was, last that's name. That's so mean for you to ask me that. But <laughs> you know, now I'm like, <laughs> well, <laughs> like there might have been some wisdom in that. <laughs> you sure you want to say Marbury? Marbury. Yeah. I don't even think that that fits me anymore either, though. Megan Marbury? I do. Really? Mm-hmm. Because it was always Marbury or no one could ever say, say it, right? It would be hard to pronounce. Marbury? Marbury? Yeah. Megan Marbury? Because, you know, I'm from St. Louis. We, we would have said, like, Marbury or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of people say yeah. that, Marbury. No, I'm, and I'm like, there's no you. <laughs> there's no... It just, it's like library. It's too, it's yes. like, right. it's too many syllables. Too many so syllables. library is just easy. Library. Yeah. <laughs> <It's too, laughs> library. Library is easy to say. Library. <laughs> it's like you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Are you hungry? Mm-hmm. Are you? No. Oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> she's always thinking about food. Are you hungry, Jackie? Starving. Are you Ooh, really? Jesus. What do you want to eat? Like, well, what's your favorite something? snack? What order you snack? Snack? She's, <laughs> I'm not a you snack. can't have a meal. I'm not a snacker. Dude. You're no, not. But you if I food? am going to get a snack, if I'm not caring about like calorie intake and stuff like that, it'd be like a muffin or a piece of cake or a so pie. So you're like on a, <laughs> a cheesecake. Something like that. <laughs> okay, Jackie. Like, I don't like some like, like, like little like pieces or... of Twiddlers and I don't I don't I don't that so doesn't make like sense. cake and I want a I want a little baby meal. <laughs> For she sure. Said, I that's how I be. Yeah. I'm hungry. I don't want nothing little. Yeah. This... Oh, this... Crunchy. I'm a snacker. Yeah, you're a snacker. I am a habitual snacker. <laughs> you like a little rabbit. Oh, literally. <laughs> okay. Even meals, I snack on them. I don't um, eat meals. Yeah. I can't yeah. relate to that. I, I w- <laughs> She's like, I, she, first thing I think was, first thing you said when I came in, she's like, what do you eat? You're little. <laughs> but I feel like but, you're little. Yeah. I'm petite. getting, I'm getting there. Because I had two babies during the pandemic. And so two? I had to, yeah, I had wow. to. So I'm trying to get back to my pre pandemic. Your youngest. Children? My yeah, my youngest two are two and one. So mm. how many? How many do you have? Four, four. Yeah. Okay. That's so and cool. they're so cute. They're Thank so you. cute. That's a blessing. I they love because I didn't know on social media. <laughs> I didn't know how they would come out. Well, so why? I'm really grateful. <laughs> they're cute. I thought my oldest was not cute uh-huh. when he was when he first came born. out. Oh my like god! That. You always say that. They don't you. look well at first. They. I'm like, and then it's like y'all let the baby take his first breath before he's on Instagram. <laughs> Please yeah, don't get him like that. Alien off of them. Let them grow into it. <laughs> they need at least a solid six months. Yeah, for sure. Lord, because Eli looked like Benjamin Button. Yeah. Like it looked and like he was one aging. Of, wrong. One of my kids, her eye <laughs> was to the left a little bit. <laughs> you were so and scared. I, I was so <laughs> terrified. And I told Press, I said, I don't know what the Lord is trying to test my vanity <laughs> yeah. or something. I was like, but like you, you remember when that Tyler Perry movie with Janet Jackson, her eye was, was like drifting a little bit, and he was like, just let her keep growing. And went, it went, it went back. Ooh, it went to his he like crossed. But like he had crossed <laughs> eyes, and mm. that was scary. Yeah, that is scary. and I was fully okay with being in bed. Like, no, my kid can't have that. <laughs> yeah. That now that now that is not. That's where I draw the line. That's where I draw the line because I'm not about to be perplexed what? every time he looks at me all day crossing. And they were like, it wasn't like it was like down. I'm like, oh Eli, and then he was Please. balding. He, his hands was long. He was weird looking. I was like, you oh, like, cool. he's ugly. <laughs> He's ugly. And now he's the most handsome. And now thing he's world. just like the most handsome kid. That's good. And he really loves God. That's good. And I'm proud of him. <laughs> it takes time. It does take. And time. I don't have any kids. If anybody wants to have kids, call me. No, if anyone wants to get married, get married. Yeah, get married first. 
<laughs> get married first for sure. <laughs> Braylon is um <laughs> one thing that I do like that she that she does and when she talks about having kids like you don't talk about having kids without yeah. having a family. A family, yeah. And I think that that's super important. Very important. And yeah. And I think watching you mm-hmm. I've been able to see such a like friendship mm. in your marriage mm-hmm. that is like very it's inspiring. Yes. Yeah. And, and it it's shows like, it exists. Wow. Yeah. Like you guys are like friends. Y'all be disagreeing on, you know, too. And, you got to. And I love seeing that. Because cause I feel like people, <clears throat> they just want the romance. Yeah. But there's, in a real relationship, there's times where romance doesn't exist. And so what sustains you? Mm. What sustains you is the friendship. Is yeah. that I have, I, like, I don't love you right now, but at least I like you. Mm. Mm. At least I enjoy you. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, so I think they kind of. I think they hold hands. I think it's important. So How do you go? I'm going to say y'all were friends first. Yeah. For a long time before y'all We were friends for dated. three years. Oh, wow. So, you know, cool. I was the one who gave him advice on, you know, the little ratchets that were demon possessed <laughs> that he couldn't see. Because, you know, oh, men wow. have... You're men, like, that Christian, is not your Christian, they could just be really naive mm-hmm. and foolish. And so I could just see things and just help him. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, when we started to... Since that the Lord was pulling us together, it was awkward and it was weird and it was strange because wow. I, it was it was it was weird to shift from friend to boyfriend girlfriend type thing. But I I'm grateful that the Lord <clears throat> started a, us that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to see Him. Like because when you dating people mm-hmm. first, you don't you see their representative. You say that you're all the time. seeing the projection. Yeah. But when you, I know you, you my you my friend. You're my friend. So I don't even got to do all that no more. Did it feel? Does it feel? Or for both of you, did it feel safer mm. to be like? I feel like there's like a safety. I think vulnerability is like super important in a relationship. Yeah. And I feel like a friendship helps that vulnerability. Cause I feel like we're more vulnerable with our f- platonic friends yeah. than we might be with a romantic. Yeah. Because Partner. again, yeah. you're trying to show up in like your best self yeah. and impress them. Yeah. But when your friend has already seen the worst of you, yeah. And then that turns into a romantic relationship. It's like, you it's like, you already know me and it feels more safe. I think <clears throat> yes and no. Okay. So okay. I, I think because we were friends, there was a degree to which he knew me. Mm. And so there was a degree to which there was safety. But when I knew that we were transitioning into something deeper, that meant that I have to expose more of me that, mm. I, that I didn't have to expose in as a friend. Because as a friend, I can rightly have certain boundaries, mm-hmm. right? But if we're moving towards marriage, now there's actually, like, there's more exposure that's required of me, and I don't want to go like there. you need to see so, more of me. Yeah, I actually, I went the opposite direction <laughs> and um, just shut down and just mm. became really guarded because it was like, okay, now you have the potential to hurt me. Wow. Because as a friend, you hurt me, it's cool. We, wow. we can do what we want. Mm. But if, like, I let you in, to my heart Mm-mm. yeah who initiated it <clears throat> um him so i started to kind of develop this affection for him and i just didn't know what to do with it i felt like it might have been the enemy like trying to distract <laughs> me or something <laughs> <laughs> and so i was being a disciple i was living in la at the time i was being a disciple and i told my disciple i was like i feel like i like president perry and i don't know what to do with that and i was probably 20 at this time and she was like, pray about it, which felt really unhelpful because I wanted <laughs> like, yeah, I, I wanted bullet points. For sure. And I prayed about it for a year. Wow. And I was in Chicago because that's where he's from. And it was getting to the point where like my affections were coming out. And I'm a person, you, you it's hard to read me sometimes, which I, I, I it, it keeps me safe, mm-hmm. which isn't actually good. But <laughs> it's hard to read me. And so, but I felt like my vulnerabilities and all these things. So I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want from me and Preston. I was like, I don't know if you want us to be married. I don't know if you want us to be together. I was like, but if it is your will, exact words, if it's your will for us to be married, put it on his heart to pursue me. Wow. I said, if it's on, if it's in your will for us to be friends, give me the self-control to treat him like a brother and not like a crush. Wow. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I didn't know Preston had been fasting for God to reveal his wife to him. So while I'm praying this, the Lord was bringing my self to his mind as wow. his wife so he a week later he was like hey i need to talk to you oh jesus and I was like why <laughs> because, 
He's so cute. I'm just praying. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And so he called me and he was like, I've been praying, fasting, and I don't even know if you like me. He was like, but I feel like the Lord is putting on my heart for me to pursue you. And he was like, and I'm not saying you're my wife. I'm just saying I want us to move in a direction to oh, see what's up. Oh my God. I would have so. I threw why. <laughs> the Lord has put it on your heart to pursue me? Literally. <sighs> All right, you guys, really, really quickly, we got some announcements before we move on, y'all. So you already know that we love Skims, right? It all started with their Fits Everybody collection. It's the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear, so we wanted to try more of the brand. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm always seeing their cotton loungewear all over my feed, mm -hmm. so I had to see for myself what the hype was all about. And let me tell you, they did not disappoint. The cutest, most flattering set you'll ever find for in or out of the house. You guys, I have been wearing Skims for over a year and I recently just tried the cotton collection. It is so bomb. The cotton t-shirt from Skims and it's the best t-shirts I have ever owned. I'm really picky about my fit of t-shirts, y'all. It's the worst when t-shirts are like wrinkly and they don't fit good and after a few washes they stretch out and throughout the day they just get all discombobulated okay this skims t-shirt is a game changer and it hugs my body so perfectly my search for the perfect t-shirt is finally over thank you jesus you guys skims is creating the next generation of loungewear for every body. This is Skim's most tagged collection. It's made with classic cotton fabric for comfortable everyday wear. Made from ultra soft and natural fibers, the cotton collection features elevated lounge pieces designed for the comfort indoors and outside. Whoever says loungewear was only for the house has not tried Skim's. Available in sizes XXS all the way to 4X. You guys, believe the hype. Skim's has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason, okay? The cotton collection and more are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show on the drop down menu that follows. All right, you guys, back to the show. That's how it works. When what the Lord puts say? people together, those types of things just, just work out. Wow. So, if well, we're single, so give us yeah. some. Does he have any single friends that are pursuing anyone right now? Is anybody <laughs> is the Lord putting anybody to on the heart? No. With a hat on. I feel sorry for y'all. I do. <laughs> I get it. No, the, no, the, the, right the single now, situation is is interesting. Ten years later, dating how y'all dated years ago <clears> is so different now. I believe. I don't even know what that's I don't like. even know what it was then because I wasn't which really, I, I wasn't yeah. even pursuing marriage or relationship at all right because i had just come to jesus so I, in my mind it was i need to figure out what life with jesus is i know before that's right. i even Ooh, that's entertain mean. that yeah, that's like, just too much work Oof. and so but I'm, i also was a very um independent which is also a subtly selfish person so i was a person that would tell you that i was content in my singleness when i was just really selfish i, I didn't mm. want to have to share my life my time my money my fa finances my trauma my issues all the things mm. and so i think the lord had to send me somebody to help me be like jesus so mm. so i think in the opposite direction there are some people that will remain single because they need to grow independent of somebody else mm. you know what i'm saying so Jackie. <laughs> Was that deep or something? <laughs> <laughs> wow. God that must have ministered to you in a really special mm -hmm. way. So tell us a little oh, wait, bit about sorry, oh, no, 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 touch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to, I want to know how she came but, to Jesus. Yes. I do have a, I have something Questions that you said that. some you said something that oh my God, it <clears> smacked <throat> me in the chest when you said it about how you came to Jesus part of that. Mm -hmm. But I want to just ask a question or how get your thoughts on because what it feels like what you and Preston have was like divine like it For felt sure. like it was like yeah. a very divine appointed thing that happened yeah and because God gives us free will and we talk about this often um based off of Miles Monroe mm. and he's like you have free will mm. choose your partner mm -hmm. choose your partner per like yeah. God's not gonna this idea of like a soulmate mm. one person being out there for you um so what are your thoughts on the ideas of that like is there because God placed 
you on Preston's heart and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? That was like a God thing. Is that the way it should be? Or is it just you choose? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe, both. maybe there's wisdom in yeah. how you choose. Maybe God is looking for us to go to him to choose. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But what, cause I feel like that might be hard and confusing for people to navigate through, especially when you're, relationship with God is maybe new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do I choose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I have free will, do I get to choose and how do I do that? Yeah. I, I think the bigger question is how to discern God's will. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's basically what we're trying to get at is how do I know what God wants me to do? Mm -hmm. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so like we, I don't think we... I don't think we become so rigid when it comes to pursuing God's will or when it comes to jobs. Right. Like, mm -hmm. or, or school, like we'll say, Lord, help me to know what school you want me to go to. Okay. And then we got all these options and we, we make a decision, but there was still some consideration of where God I'd might want, want you to go. Yeah. And so I think even when it comes to spouses and all the things, it's just, have you even asked him? Mm. Like, God, do you want me to be married? Wow. Do you want me to be single? Wow. Do you want me to date? Do you want me to be on this app? Do you want me to text this dude? Do you like, mm, but wow. we, we don't, we don't want to be that dependent. Ooh, and that's the problem. That. Mm. That's the problem. And so, but I think the lack of dependence, even in pursuing God before we pursue relationships is that we're afraid that God won't give us what we want. That, For that, sure. That you part, know what I'm saying? That's For what sure. I'm saying. So if God, For if sure. you're asking God, there's so much in this. If you're saying, A, I think the point of, is he Lord in your life? Right. And I think that's a question. Is he, first? Is he Lord? Like, yeah. does he, does he, is he your Lord? Mm -hmm. Which means are you going, like, are you allowing him to rule your life? Right. That part. And then two, if that is my biggest challenge is mm. it's not that I don't believe that you will. Mm -hmm. It's that I know that you might choose not to. Right. And what will that do to for my faith. Right. Mm -hmm. That's scary to me sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why he can't just be Lord. He has to also be good. Mm. Because if he's just Lord, that means you just, yeah. you got a lot yeah. of power and a lot of control, but you don't have the ethical nature to actually use that control for my for good. My good. Mm -hmm. But for if you're Lord and good, mm -hmm. then it means the way you exercise your power is actually always for, for my, my good. Right. And so that's, I, I think when it comes to singleness, jobs, whatever, wow. it's this faith that however you lead me, even if it does not make sense, it is good for me because mm. I marriage mm -hmm. is so hard. She said, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it is so Come difficult. On. You have two sinners Jesus. attempting to be one flesh. I I'm sure you could wreck you could uh, go ahead. Right. Like, Absolutely. I I don't want to wow. construct a hard God hasn't called me to. Wow. I don't want that. Wow. Mm. I want a heart that I'm graced to carry. Wow. And so if I know that God has sent him, sent me here, created this kind of circumstance, I know I'm ca I, I'm called to him. So mm. I know I'm graced for him. Mm. But that's a whole nother Purposeful. thing. Purposeful. You're in there and you're like, this is the purpose. This yeah. is God's will. I can fight through this because uh -huh. you already know God called me to this. I don't, I don't want a heart that I didn't, I wasn't called to. And I think that's and we're that's choosing what's in some and most times we're choosing hearts that we weren't oh, for sure. called mm -hmm. to. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. Because it's comfortable and I got somebody to lay next to me and, and tell me I'm pretty and tell me I'm beautiful. That's it. Oh Lord. That's all you want? Mm. Lord. You don't want somebody that's gonna pray for you and, and fight demons and for cover you? you? Come on. Fight demons. Fight for demons. Demons. Say another day. You can't pray. You can't and fight you demons. You want to have my child? Oh my god. I need somebody covering this. Oh, covering my <laughs> you can't pray. Facts. And you want to have a baby? Facts. What are you talking about? Facts. <laughs> like when the demon possessed when, when, nurse come in, you lollygagging you, and they can't even discern you, you that she done did a ritual before she then came. I, I need you to have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And and uh, and and, oh, and don't wee. don't be a woman who's on mission for God doing oh. podcasts and wearing the like Jesus shirts and the, the hat with the X on the back. Like, don't be that. <laughs> don't. And then have a man who isn't on one accord with you. With you yeah. That leaves a door open for you to be attacked in a way that you didn't have to be. Oh, wow. You get what I'm saying? Because mm. he's not covering you. You don't have a guard. Wow. So that's a thing. <sighs> Do you have a brother? <laughs> he's like almost 50 and he's married. 
So a friend, a couple. <laughs> what they look like? <laughs> okay, so I, I could I could go in several directions. Um, I want to know the beginning of her Christ okay, journey. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then you you take off. No, I just want to know that beginning process. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about so much that little mind is just Jackie 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 okay tell us how you <laughs> came to, came Jesus. to Jesus I really want to know that because okay. I'm on my new journey with like having more relationship outside of religion yeah. both of our parents are pastors my dad's a pastor grew up in the church I tell this story all the time and just coming to him and knowing Jesus for myself I just experienced that and yeah. had that journey. So I want to know like what brought you yeah. to Christ and changed your life in that way. Yeah. So <clears throat> long story, but short story is I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but I was exposed to Christian ideas really early. And so my aunt Merle was like the most saved this woman I've ever known in my life. She Come on, safe. Merle. Like, to, like, to, <laughs> like I've never seen her wear pants, like, in my life. <laughs> like, she just, Not even I, at the house. No, it was dresses. It was jean dresses through the week and then, like, the real, <laughs> the real, like, <laughs> Baptist dresses is on Sundays or whatever. And she just was, like, so um, contrary to, like, what I live Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. what I saw, what I observed and stuff like that. So she would take me to church and I think there is where like a seed was implanted about just God, the Bible, worship, all the things. But at the end of the day, I really am an extremely rebellious person. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of Christianity um, in the mm. truest form, I was like, ah. I like I like God, mm -hmm. but like that, that like holiness, like that's yeah. crazy. And so <laughs> <laughs> I was sure crazy. Me. And so, but during this time, I think some of the sins I'm struggling with is I'm introduced to pornography when I was around six. So wow. I was watching pornography really early. Then there's masturbation, and then there's same sex attraction. I noticed that I liked girls probably first or second grade. Mm. Wow. Then there's molestation. So you're also dealing with um, just the perversion and the brokenness that's mm. introduced into like a young child's mm. like life really early yeah. mm. um and so all of that's carrying with me then you get to middle school and it's just like okay i gotta be i gotta be like funny or i gotta be cool mm -hmm. okay let me get jordans and abercrombie and you know <laughs> <Foster>. hollister because <laughs> air apostle was like air apostle was like the broke Bro version the broke of yeah, and so was. like but it's me trying to be a people pleaser to be mm -hmm. affirmed and to get affection yeah. and stuff like that high school comes like i'm smoking weed every day lips black all the time and the weed though was because I knew too much about God to not be convicted by what I did. Mm -hmm. Like I, I what do you we, mean? Like when you grow up hearing that sin is real mm -hmm. and that the wages of sin is dead, mm -hmm. then when you sin, you know that this will lead to death. Mm -hmm. And so I was smoked because I was afraid to go to hell. It was like every night I just didn't, I was just afraid that God would like kill wow. me or something. Like there was this like awareness mm. that I'm not living right. Mm. And I know I'm not living right, but I also don't want to live right. Wow. So I don't know what you want me to do. Wow. And so, Cause you had no desire to live right. None. Mm -hmm. Absolutely none. And so I told my cousin, wow. I told my cousin who was my aunt Merle's daughter. I was like, I feel like, I feel like God is like calling me or something. <laughs> because I feel like it's so I feel like I might like, like, be special. No. I'm like, I, I might, might be like, I might be living, uh, leading a revolution out here. Like, I, I, I really might be that world. I'm gonna share something I've never shared before. Come on, KFS exclusive. I, girl. <laughs> I was doing something very intimate with a girl, mm -hmm. and in that moment, I felt the burden of God. Oh, oh my God. Wow. Oh, we. It was like, I felt like he was like, this ain't what I called Ooh, you to do. Wee. In the moment, right? And so those types of things, I was like, oh, he really won't like let up. Le like, he because you can't be interrupting that. Knock it. Like, right. like not right. this. Like, it's right. 11 p.m. You can't do that. Right. Right. Courtesy. Have, wait till she leaves. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, wait now. till I'm thinking about what I did. <laughs> After. <laughs> You know I'm gonna get to that point. You could have met me in my despair, in yeah, my no. in my regret. No, but God is He's really good at interrupting things wow. on purpose. And so wow, I called wow, my cousin. Wow. I was like, I feel like God is calling me. I was like, but I don't want him. 
Like I was like, I just, I'm just, I'm just cool on that. And she was like, I know enough about God to know that He's going to do all that He has to do to show you that you need Him. Wow. Again, I didn't know what that meant. It's yeah. like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. And so I ended up going to jail, getting arrested for stealing. My car got told and they took my car. I had bought a car off eBay. Don't ask me why. But okay, <laughs> what did ask, you me why. Steal? ask me why. Why ask did me you why. No, what did I want to know what you stole? And so I, I, I used don't to, try to brush over that story. <laughs> what did you do? I used to How steal. Did you steal? I used to steal clothes <laughs> before we went to the club so I could use the money for weed. Okay. So I would be like, nah, like I'm gonna get a new outfit, but I'm not gonna pay for it. Right. And so I could use that twenty dollars to get two sacks. I don't know if they call it sacks anymore. Do they? What do they, they call it? I don't think they call it sacks. Okay. So in St. Louis, you can get you can get two for twenty, and it was okay. it was two sacks for twenty. Sacks. Anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, I was I, I was using my ability to be efficient for sin. <laughs> like, I was financing with the devil. Like now, it's, it's making me a very good business person, but. Anyway, so I was I, w- I got caught. I didn't get caught. The person I was with would try to steal a uh, polo shirt out of Dillard's, and so I got, Lord. I got caught with them. Got arrested. I bought this car off eBay because I really wanted the car for Minister Society, and they didn't have it. No way. Why are you looking at me like that? I, n- okay, you wanted a car <laughs> from Minister. from Minister Society. You look like a mother so you- that's like concerned. <laughs> like, like why are you? I'm trying to. Figure out the we're putting the pieces. Yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. No judgment. No judgment. Yeah. No judgment. We, are, we we love you. You're hilarious. We love you. I appreciate that. How you feel about how I feel about the hat is how I feel <laughs> about, about that the car. Yeah. <laughs> now it was given like wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, parental. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> it's okay. So like the car, the stealing, the jail, all the things, and when they told my car away, I was with my friend smoking a blunt. And why I you was, were? Why they were towing it? They had told it, and we had to walk back to my girlfriend's house. <laughs> Got it. And I was like, "Were you in the car?" But I still had my weed. Yeah, and so I, 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 walk, I walked back to the car. And I was like, "We gotta like get some peace in light of this." Because I had this car five weeks and y'all just took it from me. He's like, who got a light? And I didn't have a title, so I don't know. I'm gonna get it back. And I work at Wendy's, so. <laughs> I can't get it out. I am at a full disadvantage. I am at a full disadvantage. I'm here to an hour. How am I get it out? Anyway. <laughs> and I work at <laughs> Like Nothing, sure. is, nothing saw, was in my when favor. When you said that story, you were like, my contact <laughs> fell in the lady's burger. Oh, you saw that. And she drove back around. Gave it back. And gave it, gave it back. When she no, said, said, did somebody lose a contact? No, it's how she said, hey, <laughs> I just came you through there. You said people are too nice. They're too nice. They got mad at me for that comment. I think I deleted it. But anyway. <laughs> sorry. Back Please up. don't break it back up. I'm sorry. I'm smoking the blunt and I tell my friend, I'm like, does God really want me that bad? Mm. Because it felt mm. like he was making my life chaotic. Mm. And it was becoming, mm. oh, mind you, my dad died. So the, the, the chaos was God's mercy because he was creating circumstances where I could not find safety apart from anybody but him. But him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm not even going to let you. Like some of us really be messed up in the head thinking that being prosperous is God's blessing. Sometimes that's a curse. Sometimes that's actually not a blessing for life to be so easy. So for me, wow. I, I now rejoice that God Jackie kind of messed up some stuff so I could look up. And so anyway, October, this is 2008, so I was 19. October, Ooh, I'm in my room. It's just she keeps going as if she didn't say, <laughs> say something. something. And it's like <laughs> that was a word. Well, maybe you should elaborate a little bit and help us. I'm trying to move the story along for you. I get you. it, but then don't say stuff like that. <laughs> don't you know. articulate things. I know. That to me. From the kingdom. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I am mm-hmm. gonna Let's just put a pin in it. Okay. And, and we we'll come, come back. back. We we'll can circle back. Jesus. Uh, I'm in my room watching. I really believe it was making the band. And the Great band, show. The band was never Which made. Which one? Yeah. The Is not like the original. The, it might have been the Danny D. Kane Love. season. That was a great season. But I don't Fire. think it was, because I don't remember it being successful. They were successful. It was one of them. Okay. I was watching something unspiritual, is really the point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't was watching, watching something secular. It wasn't TV. It, was, it wasn't none of that. <laughs> Monday Star. And yeah, I, so Monday Star. I felt, I felt, I had a thought come through my mind that said, she will be the death of you. And I said, wait, I wouldn't say that to myself. 
And I don't think the the devil would say that to me. And the thing when God speaks now, I'm familiar with his voice is that it's a, it's a very strong idea that's confirmed in scripture and resonates in your body. Hey, KFS fam. This month we are partnering with Stock X, you guys. We're super excited because StockX has created the smartest, most dynamic platform for current culture commerce today, y'all. StockX is an innovative live marketplace where you can find retro Jordans, Nikes, Yeezys, gaming consoles, Legos, collectible artworks, trading cards, and more, y'all. I'm going to be on there because I love me some sneakers. I'm getting into them more, so StockX is going to hook it up. StockX innovative model features of a broad range of products, global supply, real-time market pricing, a rigorous verification process, and anonymous transactions. Y'all, real-time data is fueled by their richly diverse and global community, you guys. It's all a real-time reflection of the connected, collective genius of StockX buyers and sellers. StockX believes everyone has an equal right to self-expression, you guys. Participation in current culture is not just by and for editors or influencers. Okay. Stock X trusts you to play too in whatever level you choose. They put the tools in your hands, pricing data, editorial inspo, personalization, and leave the decision to you. You guys shop stockx.com now with a $15 off $150 by using promo code KFS. 15 off. Again, that's stockx.com with promo code KFS15OFF. Okay, you guys, back to the show. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was like a, it interrupted all thoughts and it wasn't triggered by any external thought, right? Mm. So I could, that's why I say if I was watching Mm. something Christian, it would have made sense. Then perhaps it could, I could have just said, oh, that's just my subconscious, like Mm. uh, being in alignment with what I'm watching. Mm. I wasn't watching anything related to Mm. God, wasn't thinking about God. So when that happened, I was like, whoa, like, God is trying to intercept this Ooh, moment. And thank so you, Lord. I just kind of um, started to think and talk to the Lord. And I was like, but God, my immediately re- immediate response was, I don't want to be straight, though. Because I presumed that God calling me to himself was the same as him calling me to be heterosexual. Mm. I didn't understand that he's just like, no, just I'm actually just calling you to you be, with, be me, with me. Come here. Right? Jesus, Lord. And so I heard the Lord say, just learn to love me. And we'll work everything else out. Wow. I'm like, okay. So I started to think about everything that I loved and enjoyed and its consequences. And I'm like, okay, I'm a liar. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm a thief. <laughs> That's it. I masturbate and watch porn. I know that <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Know that's it. I know that right. <laughs> I'm rebellious to my parents. Like people forget that's a part of the commandments right. is to obey and honor mm. your, your parents. I'm rebellious to every piece of authority in my life. That's it. Like everything I did was wicked according to scripture. And what it showed me is that my, my issue was not just my sexuality. It was my heart. Wow. My entire mm. heart was an mm. idol making factory. I did not want to love God more than everything that he's made. Period. Jesus. And so I think that's one of the conversations that we have to have about this conversation on sexuality (laughs) (laughs) even when we get to we we start to we isolate the loud sins i have to keep going (laughs) oh are you on this stuff that was so good i'm sorry i'll stop that that was crazy (sighs) say it again (sighs) can you say it again i don't know what i said oh you don't know what you (laughs) said (laughs) now you don't know what god told you i don't know what i said it Y'all want me lie. to wrap it up? It was just, no, no, no. It, it ain't wrapped up yet. It can't be. Just you said. No, nah, I don't even know what she said. <laughs> you said that you didn't love God more than you loved what He made. I loved everything God made more than I loved, loved Him. him. <clears throat> so, and I say that because especially when you grow up in church mm. or even the way social media is constructed, you think God is only troubled by your loudest sins. The, the, it's, it's, it's not the loud stuff is just a symptom of the heart. Yeah. It's, it's that yeah. your heart is the problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's your soil is corrupted. And so the fruit, the plants that's coming out of that are just indicative of the heart. And so that's why you could you could try to stop the big sins and still be problematic. Lord. Because you haven't fixed the problem. Lord. That's not the problem. <laughs> you are. 
Where are you going? For sure. Here. You're, you're, you got it from here. She, she, she has it. For sure. You left. I'm sorry. So for sure. And that's Romans. You're talking about that. That's though, Romans the one, where it, it talks about idolatry. You know what I'm saying? Is that they exchange the glory of the creator for created mm. things. And so like the way I grew up, I just thought. Okay, I just gotta, I just gotta be a good person. I just gotta stop calling this this person. I just gotta stop watching this, or I, I just gotta mm-hmm, stop listening mm-hmm. to this. And I try to, to I try to mm. mechanize holiness, mm. like you know. Say, what does that mean? Like, <clears throat> if I stop doing, doing certain things, behaviors. then that will change me. Yeah. But that didn't change me. It actually just made me more discouraged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What so so that that puts me in a position where I have to recognize that if I want to be different, I can't do it. God has to do it. Oh, Salvation is a miracle God. that the Holy Spirit himself has to create. What does it mean to be a new creation if not that God himself does it in you? He Thank you, you, you don't know how to create nothing that God ain't gave you. Wow. So he has to give you a new heart, right? And wow. that's what I never Lord. understood about church. I'm doing the altar calls. I'm I'm saying the prayer 15,000 times. I'm trying to, but nothing ever changed me until I finally said, God, I don't know how to do this. Until I don't you know. went to him and said that. In and utter did, dependence. Yes, I need you to do I it. I don't know how to do this, but if you want me to be like you, you have to do it. And I was different. So that's my story. The beginning Not of. ending on, and I was different. Yeah, I had to wrap it up so you can make a reel out of it. You know, you got to make it real conclusive. You're so freaking cool. Oh, man. <laughs> For sure. I'm like, you just said so much, like, Jesus. And it's not the change behavior. It's the change of heart. Heart. You, Megan, you, you said that recently, which has resonated with me a lot. You think when you come to God, are you are newly saved and you newly have a relationship with him, at least for me, it's like all these things that you feel like you can't do anymore. Like you said, and I I went through that a little bit. Even on social media, it's like, oh, when you're talking about Christ now, you still twerking? Give me a second. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am. (laughs) Give me a minute. He's working on the heart. (laughs) So it's like all these lists of checklist things that you have that, no, it's the heart. And it's it's because you're developing out loud. A hundred percent. Not many people. A hundred percent can even relate to what it what it's like to learn discipleship publicly, and so I think people need to be gracious. Yeah. Towards you. Wow! 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 <clears throat> so when you say, <laughs> or when you say God had to do it, yeah, I understand because. In the sense of I've experienced it, yeah. so I understand yeah. that. Um, mm. I don't know if everyone has to come through it. And what feels for me was like super volatile. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like he had to, like that wilderness season for real, like he had to bring me to a place of wilderness and isolation to break me. Yeah. And I'm glad that he, like, usually I feel like people were like resent the wilderness, Mm -hmm. but it's like there's safety in it because Mm -hmm. it's just you and him. Mm -hmm. And at least a lot of those ugly things that are coming out, Mm -hmm. it's just you and him Mm -hmm. to have that moment. And so that's a mercy to bring you to a wilderness, but it's wildly uncomfortable and it's painful. Yeah. And I often, like I I put this in one of my posts recently, but I was like, you know, lately Mm. my journal has been filled with more tears than words. I haven't really been able to write anything Mm -hmm. um, because when I take time to get before him, I feel broken. Mm. Like Mm. he's constantly, like I'm sitting there and I just feel broken and Mm. I don't really have a lot to say, but I know that he's interpreting all of it. Like, he interprets it. But how do you know and what do you do to put yourself in a position to be, to have your heart change? Mm. Like, what does that, because if he has to do it and, and we come to him, because mm. I under, I, I'm saying that I have a place of understanding of, I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah. And I'm tired of figuring it out. Yeah. I'm tired of feeling like you've called me, but nothing is working for me right now. Mm-hmm. 
I feel alone. Yeah. I feel that you've abandoned me. I feel like everyone has abandoned me. Yeah. That's not always, and that's not truth. It's just what it feels like. Mm-hmm. It, it's becoming more frustrating. Mm. And I thought you were bringing me to a season where things were going to get better mm-hmm. and things are getting worse for me. Mm-hmm. So you know what I struggle with. Mm-hmm. You know that this isn't easy for me and you keep allowing it to happen. Mm. So what do you do? Mm. Like, how do you know? Because I know that there's been a heart change in the way that I'm approaching him and the way that I'm navigating and seeing things. But how do you put yourself in a position to let that change hmm. happen? Because he has to do it. So what is that? And how do you know he's done it? A part of the process is that he is he is changing you by the by the fact that you're engaging with God during the process. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Like you don't have to be having a conversation. You don't have to be curious. Mm. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be journaling and crying. Like, but you keep trying. Mm. You keep talking. You keep asking, keep going and that back means what he's doing is working mm. because now you're more dependent on him for everything than you would have been if he just let, if he let your trial or your season be, cause he, he needs the, de- he knows how much breaking you need and he's not even broken you to the degree that you actually need it because he knows that to crush you, mm. but he's breaking you just enough to make you dependent wow. so that when he does lift the suffering, when he does lift it, that kind that, that, that intimacy that developed will carry you when prosperity is present. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like God, Ooh. God is so kind that he will lever- leverage difficulty as a means of protecting us. And I say that because like, even this last year, I put this on threads yesterday. Um, I you was, was like, you was going off on threads. It's like, was relax. I, you I was gotta going get off. back on there. You was going, <laughs> she said back. The quotes that you were putting, I, I, I commented, I was like, immediately this is in my Amazon cart. Um, the spiritual, uh, leadership. Oh quote. yeah. That's cause I'm in class. So I'm reading a lot of uh, books, but, um, This year has been one of private brokenness where just spiritual stuff has happened, you know, like sicknesses in my family, uh, difficulty in my marriage, insecurity in my heart, Mm. um, complications with friendships where or even navigating like, oh, people really just be around me to be around me. They don't really love me. Mm. Or they, they just be trying to like use me, but mm. like in the name of God or betrayal, like deep, profound mm. betrayal that you just could have never saw happening, right? <laughs> and what it's, it's, I can't explain it. It's like, I think for a long time, because I'm a thinker, I thought myself as weak, but I didn't actually feel it. Mm. You know, like, yeah, I'm weak. God is strong. But it's like, not like I feel Feel weak. weak. Mm. Yes. I feel it. And it it shifted how often I pray. It shifted even my, I could be a very uh, self-assured, arrogant person, naturally, just because I'm smart. And so I can think Mm. like, oh yeah, I'm straight. I understand. Yeah, for sure. I get it. But it's like, nah, like the Lord is like, even your intelligence won't carry you. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. You're, you, you, you are not resourceful enough to do all that I've called you to do. You need me. But the crazy thing is, is that even in this season, I feel like my ministry has been more fruitful, mm-hmm. more effective, more clear, more simple to a certain degree. And it's all because I'm more dependent. So that's On what him. God is doing. That's what God is doing. He wants to in use this season, you. Yeah. He, but he wants to show you that he doesn't need you to use you. He don't need you. Mm. He don't need you, but he wants to use you. And to to use you fully, he has to clean you out. So he's just being good. I'm sorry. Does that make sense? Did did that make sense at all? I don't think I answered your question. You did. Okay. And you know you did. I don't think I did. Because I didn't say nothing about the heart and him changing and stuff like that. You did. Okay. Did you, how long have you had your platform? Like, I want a little bit of your backstory because I just recently came, or not came to your platform, but found you Mm -hmm. in the past. It's been less than a year, I think. Mm -hmm. And I just turned into a super fan. I know. (laughs) I'm like, can I say fan? Um, (laughs) But like before you came to Christ or even before your your ministry on your platform, did you always have 
uh, public platform where you had to go through this transition publicly because that's what I'm mm-hmm. kind of going through. It started early. Okay. So I became a Christian in 2008. So I was 19. And then when I was 20, I started writing poetry because I just had this real desire to be deep. And I, I was like, oh, deep people write poems. So <laughs> sure. That's logical. literally the logic. That, logical. That has been me before. I'm like, I have to write poetry. Yeah. Ooh, that's not your calling, babe. <laughs> No, you want to be deep so bad. Do you see that flower on that wall? It's like, this is whack as fuck. I'm sorry, excuse my language. Right. Excuse my language. It's the heart. Girl. <laughs> so I started writing poetry. You're good. And I, I got connected to a ministry in LA uh, where I ended up living for a couple of years. And through poetry is what started the public platform mm. okay okay um and so is I, i'm i'm grateful to god that he's he's like expanded it gradually like and i think that's some of the the struggle we're seeing now when it comes to christians like social media has made it where people get famous very quick, quick. quick. and so they don't have any time to really develop um so the lord gave me the ability to to develop cool. so mm. yeah cool so one of the like Cause you were an artist before you were saved. Like you've always been an artist, right? No, no. I, didn't do, I did nothing before I was saved. She's like, like I didn't have any of Wendy's. nothing. <laughs> I didn't. I worked. I went. I went to work and I smoked weed. Mm. That's lit. And I, so I, I was getting gas guess. stations to replace lighters all the time. That's so like you preach, right? You're, yeah. Are you a pastor? Mm-hmm. No. no. Okay. Okay. She okay. Said, okay. Mm-mm. Okay. Never. A reverend. Don't no. say never. A bishop. Don't say never. I'm just Jackie. I'm Jackie. Just, just, Jackie who who has speaks. the spiritual gift of teaching. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay, what I was okay, saying. Okay. But would you, do you think are the abilities, the creative abilities that you had, you don't feel like you acknowledged those until you came? I don't think I was surrounded by people who had a discerning eye to see what God had placed in me and drew it out. Mm. Because I think, I think some, I I honestly think sometimes like when you're around people, it's just people just, and I don't think it's their fault. Like my mom was just, she was working. Mm -hmm. She was a single mother, right? Like I'm not in church. I'm not surrounded by Christians. I'm not surrounded by discerning or wise people. And so that's not even what we think about is, let me see about you and no. and mm-hmm. pour I'm into to you survive. and call, yeah day to day. So I think yeah. that's what I, yeah. I had no idea mm. that I had gifts. I had no idea that I was smart. I, I knew I was rational, logical, all the things, but I I didn't know my potential mm. until I became a Christian. And Christians started to say, "Huh, you got some wisdom. Mm. Huh, you're really creative. Mm. Huh, you're insightful. Wow, huh, you're a leader." And it's like, "Oh, am I?" Like and, and, and that ignited something in you yes, to pursue those. Because yeah. they would say things that resonated with what I felt, felt called to do. Oh my God. I felt I, I felt this desire to preach the Bible. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And then people being like, no, I think you got the gift of teaching. I knew I could be in rooms and wow. start to like see how people move and understand them without them even saying a word. Oh, that's the gift of discernment. Wow. Oh, okay. Like I knew that like I would say things things nobody wanted to say. Oh, that's like a prophetic gift. Like that you want to speak into culture and you don't even care what it'll cost you. Ooh. I didn't know. That's why we need people. To be like, I see this in I you. I see this in you and go, like that fire and Go do it. that. Oh, that's dope. And to if you if people mm. have position, like my pastor at the time, he had the position to create space for me to cultivate my gift. Mm. Right. And so like I think that was a big part of it. Whereas like one time it was a Sunday and he randomly threw people up that could teach or thought they could teach on the stage. And he was like, yeah, go, go, uh, go preach. Go say something. Preach what? I've been saying for 70 <laughs> seconds, sir. And so I just found like a random verse and was like, Jesus said right here, you know, to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So we need to go be making disciples of all nations and he going to help us. That's all I had. So that's what I did. <laughs> that was your first sermon. No, my first sermon was about hell. <laughs> Jackie. That was my... What was it? What Jackie said, I'm coming out She's clear. She's coming out the gate. Very strong. You don't want to go there. Very Because <laughs> he just snatched me out. You said he just re- restored me and... The no, I was, I was extremely zealous. I tried zealous. to save as many people as possible. I was extremely zealous. I was going on online. To, I was tagging everybody on Facebook that I used to go to the club with and yeah, saying, y'all. y'all are going straight to hell. <laughs> Straight to hell, dancing with demons and Nephilim and and and, and fallen seraphim. 
And that was when Waka Flocka and all was out. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> in this club. I'm coming to close. I'm shaking my dreads. Throwing these bones and busting <laughs> these Shake heads. that booty meat. <laughs> what are you doing? You got a dunk. What are we doing here? You said y'all are going to hell. And I'm trying to help you. <laughs> so you were so you were rescuing everyone that was in the club. In the wrong way. You go way. through the that wrong way. None of them received that. it. Ooh, yeah. None of them received it. I had to stop it. myself. Well, yeah. I was like, you can't say that to people. That was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, was you abusive. are still lost, baby. I feel like the, I don't know if you ever went through this, but I was raised. So my look story is a little different because I was raised in church. Like I mm-hmm. was submerged mm-hmm. into all things God from the moment my mom found out she was pregnant <laughs> with me. Good. She, <laughs> I mean, dunked me. I That's mean, good. I remember being in her stomach. Oh, yeah, for scripture. sure. hundred so percent. Like it was just, I've, I've always been submerged and had an acknowledgement and awareness of God it was mm. never foreign to me. <laughs> um, but I went through a phase where I was like super zealous mm-hmm. in my walk. And then I remember transitioning and I feel like I'm getting, I'm coming on the other side of this thing, but I was in a place for a while where grace hmm was um it completely altered the way that i looked at god Mm -hmm. like i looked at i started to question a lot of things that Mm -hmm. i knew his word said i started Mm -hmm. to question all of that yeah i started to question if it was really real yeah Mm -hmm. i started to question like well if you are so loving yeah and you are so kind and you are so good why Mm -hmm. x y and z yeah Mm -hmm. why does this even matter Mm -hmm. Why can't we listen to this type of music? Why can't we do these type of things? Like Mm -hmm. I was, and I was very relaxed Mm -hmm. in convictions. Mm -hmm. Um, And I could feel that fading, that conviction fading more and more Mm -hmm. as I kept making excuses Mm -hmm. for sin. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, because he brought me to a very wild Come here. Wilderness. I mean, I yeah. said, come here. <laughs> a, like, yeah. That was so that now he's brought me to that place. And I've read his word more than I've ever read his word yeah. in my life. Yeah. And it is wildly changing the way that I am seeing everything. Mm-hmm. And it's, and I'm trying not to go back to a place where I'm too mm. overzealous mm-hmm. and not walking in humility because mm. I don't want to be everyone's going to hell. Yeah. I don't want mm-hmm. to be that yeah. because I know that so that's you're doing not helpful. Wrong or you're wrong. Or you're it's not it's, helpful it's, at it's all. Not yeah. I don't think it's helpful at all. But I'm also in a place where I know his truth. Yeah. And when you know it, you're responsible for what you know, yeah. not how you feel. Yeah. And I'm, I know certain things now. And so trying to navigate through what you know yeah. and give that in love, that's, it feels very mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. Like that, this feels harder mm-hmm. now than it ever has felt before. Yeah. And having this platform makes it even harder. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Cause y'all have, it's, it, it will cost y'all a lot to tell the truth. All right, you guys, are you on Patreon? If the answer is no, you're tripping. Y'all are missing out on exclusive content, y'all. You're missing out on the meat and potatoes. The meat and potatoes. Y'all just getting, like, the appetizer. What? You need the full course meal. Exclusive tickets. Yeah. First, exclusive merch. Y'all are getting exclusive content, BTS, all of the things. If you're not on Patreon. And they get to go to the retreat. The retreat? It's only... Hold on. So you telling me we're going to... Tulum, Mexico, yep. February 23rd, and we're only selling tickets on Patreon? Only. Y'all, if you're not on Patreon, you need to subscribe right now. Head over to our Patreon and join the Chain Gang, okay? We love you guys, and we'll see y'all on Patreon. Link it. Chain Gang. Boom. Boo, yeah. Join Patreon right now. Love y'all. Love y'all. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Know For Sure podcast. Make sure you keep the conversation going and use our hashtag, KnowForSurePod. Yes, we want to see you guys share the hashtag, KnowForSurePod, on all social media platforms. We want to keep the conversation going. And follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter, KnowForSurePod.